are open all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee and worthily magnify thy holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear what our Lord Jesus Christ, hear what our Lord Jesus Christ said, thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment, and the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. <laughs> Almighty God, that we who for our evil deeds do worthily deserve to be punished by the comfort of thy grace may be mercifully relieved through our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Almighty and everlasting God, who hatest nothing that thou hast made, and dost forgive the sins of all those who are penitent, create and make in us new and contrite hearts that we, worthily lamenting our sins and acknowledging our wretchedness, 
may obtain in thee the God of all mercy, perfect remission and forgiveness. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost be all honor and glory, world without end. Amen. Here beginneth the 21st verse of the 39th chapter of the book of the prophet Ezekiel. And I will set my glory among the heathen, and all the heathen shall see my judgment that I have executed, and my hand that I have laid upon them. So the house of Israel shall know that I am the Lord their God, from that day and forward. And the heathen shall know that the house of Israel went to captivity for their iniquity, because they trespassed against me. Therefore hid I, hid I my face from them, and gave them into the hand of their enemies. So fell they all by their sword. According to their uncleanliness, and according to their transgressions, have I done unto them, and hid my face from them. Therefore thus saith the Lord God, Now will I, be, now will I bring again the captivity of Jacob, and have mercy upon the whole house of Israel, and will be jealous for my holy name. After that, they have borne their shame, and all their trespasses, whereby they have trespassed against me, when they dwelt safely in their land, and none made them afraid. When I have brought them again from the people, and gathered them out of their enemies' lands, and am sanctified in them, in the sight of many nations, then shall they know that I am the Lord their God, which caused them to be led into captivity among the heathen. I have gathered them unto their own land, and have left none of them any more there. Neither will I hide my face any more from them, for I have poured out my spirit upon the house of Israel, saith the Lord God. Here endeth the lesson. <laughs> The epistle is written in the fourth chapter of Galatians, beginning at the 21st verse. Tell me, ye that desire to be under the law, do ye not hear the law? For it is written that Abraham had two sons, the one by a bondmaid, the other by a free woman. But he who was of the bondwoman was born after the flesh, but he of the free woman was by promise. Which things are an allegory? For these are the two covenants. The one from the Mount Sinai, which gendereth the bondage, which is Agar. For this Agar is the Mount Sinai in Arabia, and answereth to Jerusalem, which thou is, and is in bondage with her children. But Jerusalem, which is above, is free, which is the mother of us all. For it is written, Rejoice, thou barren that bearest not. Break forth and cry, thou that travailest not. For the desolate hath many more children than she which hath an husband. Now we, brethren, as Isaac was, are the children of promise. But as then he that was born after the flesh persecuted him that was born after the spirit, even so it is now. Nevertheless, what saith the scripture? Cast out the bondwoman and her son. For the son and the bondwoman shall not be heir with the son of the free woman. So then, brethren, we are not children of the bondwoman, but of the free. Here ended the epistle. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. St. John, beginning at the first verse. Glory be to thee, O Lord. Jesus went over the Sea of Galilee, which is the Sea of Tiberias, and a great multitude followed him, 
because they saw his miracles which he did on them that were diseased. And Jesus went up into a mountain where he sat with his disciples and the Passover, a feast of the Jews, was nigh. When Jesus then lifted up his eyes and saw a great company come unto him, he saith unto Philip, Whence shall we buy bread, that these may eat? And this he said to prove him, for he himself knew what he would do. Philip answered him, Two hundred penny worth of bread is not sufficient for them, that every one of them may take a little. One of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, said unto him, There is a lad here which hath five barley loaves and two small fishes. But what are they among so many? And Jesus said, Make the men sit down. Now there was much grass in the place. So the men sat down in number about five thousand. And Jesus took the loaves, and when he had given thanks, he distributed to the disciples, and the disciples to them that were set down, and likewise of the fishes, as much as they would. And when they were filled, he said unto his disciples, Gather up the fragments that remain, that nothing be lost. Therefore they gathered them together and filled twelve baskets of the fragments of the five barley loaves, which remained over and above unto them that had eaten. Then those men, when they had seen the miracle that Jesus did, said, This is of a truth that, that prophet, <clears throat> this is of a truth that prophet I should come into the world. Praise be to thee, O Christ. <laughs> in the Lord, the Lord shall be even as the Mount Sion, which may not be removed, but stand as fast forever. Not be a sand about sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead, and the life of the world to come. Amen. Well, good morning, everybody. Good morning. Great to see you. Um, you know, I, uh, I'm so grateful to a parishioner who, I won't name names, but after the 8 a.m. Mass, you know, I, we go out on the patio and we have coffee and, and, and food and usually treats. But, you know, I was so grateful when she brings me coffee every Sunday. I, uh, it's, it's Sandy Kirkwell. 
<laughs> anyway, bless Sandy Kirkwood, because, you know, losing an hour of sleep last night, it just, you know, I hope you all survived. But uh, anyways, oh, great to see you. And uh, we have a lot of exciting things going on. We're kind of midway through Lent right now. And so uh, I just wanted to highlight a few things. Uh, first, uh, if you're here for the first time, we welcome you. Hope you'll come back. It's great to have you this morning. And uh, we do have coffee hour out there, too, for if you need that cup of coffee or more than one cup. Um, and then we also have something exciting taking place uh, after uh, this, well, this afternoon at 3 p.m. Uh, is the Masterworks concert at UNLV. And it's going to be performing Bach and Mozart. So that should be, if you like Bach and Mozart, you can't go wrong. So afterwards, uh, those of you who can, we're going to gather uh, for dinner uh, at 5.30. Well, dinner will be at 6 p.m. at the Hofbrau House. I've never been to that one. But do they serve German food there? Schnitzel. Oh, yeah. Okay. So anyway, if you'd like to have a good meal, uh, you can join us too afterwards for that. So Roger, thank you so much for providing this for us. Uh, not that you're paying for it, but that you can let us know about these wonderful events that take place uh, in, in Las Vegas. Also, um, we uh, have, uh, we're getting ready, uh, we are offering some wonderful things that we just happen to find in this church. Uh, and that is, um, we put some items in the middle classroom on the tables there. If you'd like to browse through, perhaps there's something you'd like to take home. You know, one man's trash is another man's treasure, right? So you might find a, a gold nugget that you just love, uh, love to take home. And if you don't take it home, uh, we are going to give it away to a charitable organization, or, or, or it might end up there. I don't know in the trash, but we shall see. And then if you'd like uh, to remember uh, your loved ones at the altar and uh, show you a sign of your love for them, on Easter Day, we'll have Easter lilies up here and back or all around the church. So um, if you'd like to offer a donation uh, for lilies, in memory of a loved one, you can do that as well. So, uh, and the uh, I think the little uh, envelope for that is in the back table back there outside on the patio. And then ACW meeting will be at 1 p.m. this uh, this Saturday. Uh, they'll be talking about the uh, potluck uh, luncheon after Easter Day masses at 10:30 after the 10:30 a.m. mass. So that's at one. Um, all women are invited to the ACW as well. And then at 12 noon we have a vestry meeting uh, this Saturday as well. Um, we have also our Bible studies continue and uh, just a lot of exciting things going on here at St. George's. Uh, some other news is you may notice our church sign is not there anymore. Well, and God, I guess the high winds that blew the sign out. So ended up on the, um, in the parking lot. Uh, the homeschoolers, though, brought it in and they put it in the back, uh, back hallway there. You know, that sign has served us over 20 years. It's just a, it's a plywood sign that a member of our parish, Tom Covert, had constructed. And uh, gosh, we got a lot of years of use out of it. And so now we're going to erect a 90-foot sign. Uh, with neon lights. <laughs> Can't do that. So anyway, God is good. We'll see how he directs us. Uh, but um, anyway, thank you, homeschoolers. All right, I guess we'll uh, stand for the... <laughs>
Ghost. Amen. Amen. Well, you may have noticed that the vestments that I'm wearing are a different color than typically are worn by a priest uh, during Lent, the Lenten season. And so you see rose-colored vestments here in place of the purple or violet. And so therefore, what that means is, is that we are midway through Lent. Everything that we do here, everything that um, you see all these symbols in the church, represent profound meaning. And the meaning for the rose-colored vestments means that now being midway through Lent, we're having a, we are having kind of a lifting of the rigors of the Lenten disciplines that we are undertaking this Lenten season. So we're coming up for, if you will, refreshment. And this Sunday is also referred to not only as Rose Sunday, but Refreshment Sunday. You can see the roses on the altar signifying, yes, we are to be about, you know, festiveness and also rejoicing and what our Lord Jesus accomplished for us. Did you know that in the 40 days of Lent, if you were to look at the church liturgical calendar, it's more than 40 days of Lent. There are extra days added on to. Why is that? Because every Sunday is a mini Easter. It is a celebration of the risen Lord, of which we partake of the risen Lord in, in, uh, in the Holy Eucharist, partaking of his body and blood. So too, we are refreshed every Sunday. We are reminded that, you remember when the, uh, the disciples and Jesus were asked by those Pharisees saying, why don't your, you know, why don't, he asked, they asked Jesus, why don't your disciples fast, you know? He says, well, I am the bridegroom, you know, and they are the bride. So therefore, can the bridegroom, or the bride uh, fast while the bridegroom is in their presence? And so we have Jesus in our presence, the bridegroom. And so he gives us refreshments here on the altar of that bread which is eternal, of that bread which lasts, of that bread which gives us eternal life. And so it is uh, properly uh, you know, named Refreshment Sunday from the epistle, from Galatians, and also the gospel uh, from uh, St. John. We learn of the feeding of the multitudes with what? That miraculous feeding of bread to the multitudes. 5,000. Uh, were fed on that day, and that's just men alone, not to include women and children. In all four gospel accounts, we have recording of this miracle feeding of the five of the multitudes. That is significant, and also they also uh, uh, it's very important that the evangelists wanted to make known that connection between the multitude, the feeding of the multitudes of, with the bread, with that of the Holy Eucharist, and so. We are able to partake of that bread, which gives us that true nourishment, spiritual nourishment, as we make our pilgrimage in this life into God with God. Now, Jesus was asked, you know, the disciples, if, if you remember, let me go back. If you remember the last verse of that gospel reading today, they, they mentioned all those who witnessed this miracle says, Hey, is this that prophet that Moses had prophesied about? Is this the, the, the new Moses, the, the Messiah, the long-awaited Messiah that Moses uh, prophesied about? And that was in Deut Deuteronomy chapter 18, verse 15, where it is mentioned that Moses says, hey, look, you know, I am going, but there will be one who comes after me. The Lord thy God will raise up unto thee a prophet from the midst of thee, of thy brethren, like unto me, unto him ye shall hearken. So, everything we do in this church has meaning and is biblically rooted. So, how many days of Lent are there? Well, 40 plus. But 40 days mm -hmm. signifying, what, the 40 years that the Jews were in, in the desert, wandering uh, with Moses in the desert, but were sustained by the manna. Each day was given them their daily bread. And so, therefore, they were sustained during those 40 years until they came to the Promised Land. What happened when they were led over the River Jordan with, by Joshua? That bread ceased. There was no, man, no more manna coming down from heaven to feed them because they now were in the promised land. And so when the, uh, those wit had witnessed this miracle feeding by Jesus, says, hey, this is the new Messiah because he has just given us that bread. And Jesus says, hey, this is not the bread that you are thinking of that, uh, in your day. So we, we look back to uh, Jesus' uh, dialogue with uh, that crowd. He says, you know, if this is not the same bread that you received. Um, uh, let me just, I am that bread of life. Your fathers did eat manna in the wilderness. Chapter uh, 6 of John's Gospel, verse 48. He says, this is the bread which comes down from heaven that a man may eat thereof and not die. So in other words, he's speaking of himself. He's speaking of the Holy Eucharist, through which that bread, as we 
that as the Jews were expectant of that Messiah who would not only provide them with the spiritual bread, but also would usher in that new, the new exodus and the ushering in of the new kingdom, the heavenly kingdom. And so now we are given that great gift. Every, every time we gather here on Sunday, we are given the true bread which comes down from heaven, which is Christ himself. And he sustains us through this pilgrimage uh, which we are making through these deserts here into the kingdom of heaven. And you notice in St. Paul's Gospel, uh, did I say that correctly? St. Paul doesn't have a gospel. <laughs> in St. Paul's epistle, in uh, 1 Corinthians, we, we read how he says, uh, we are to do this breaking of bread until he comes again. So right now we behold him, his invisible presence, but when he returns, we will no longer have to eat of that manna uh, from, the, from the altar because we will see him face to face and we can feed on his very presence. And so it's wonderful to think about that. Did you know that uh, in, during Jesus' day, the uh, priests in the temple of Jerusalem, they would uh, have 12 loaves of bread on a table, and then the high priest would bless those loaves, and then he would put it on a golden table. And guess what he would, what those 12 loaves represented with the 12 tribes of Israel? Again, prefiguring the new Jerusalem, the new, uh, the new temple, or the, you know, the, the new heavens, uh, the new church, which would be the 12 apostles, so anyway, they would bless that bread and put it on a golden table, and then the high priest would lift it up, and he would say, Behold God's presence. Behold him, how much he loves you. And then he would lower it again. Isn't that something? Hey, do we do something like that? Does, do I do something like that here? Behold him, how much he loves you. And um, I was reminded of that uh, when I was down in Arizona at Scottsdale, and, you know, my father had just died, and so I went down there as a retreat uh, at, at Scottsdale, Arizona. There's that wonderful convent of evangelical Lutheran nuns. Yes, the Lutherans have nuns. And so anyway, that order was founded by uh, two women, uh, Basilia Schwenk was one of them, out of Germany after the Second World War. And she says, let's found this order of nuns that we might atone and pray for the people of Germany to be reconciled with God and also to atone for the sins of the people, the German people. Anyway, after that, uh, they decided to found one of their um, sister convents here in Scottsdale, Arizona. And so I, when I go down there, you know, I get the best night's sleep. It's like, I truly, I am refreshed and renewed because I feel the prayers of those nuns in, at that convent. I can get a good night's sleep. And you know, they give glory to God in the work they do. That is the cleanest a place I've ever been in as far as immaculately detailed, as far as very clean, giving glory to God, you know, for those whom they serve, for those who come and stay there. But also, they even had a bowl of cereal for me, and they had a little scripture verse on the kitchen table there for me. And I thought, man, I feel so loved, and I am refreshed. You know, behold how much God loves you. And so, as I walked the grounds there, and they had the Stations of the Cross through each of their, um, through that lovely uh, 10 acres of a beautifully uh, adorn, uh, attended to garden. And uh, there was a couple that was walking kind of ahead of me. And anyway, one of, she was a husband and wife, and uh, she went before me and was looking at the stations. And then her husband sat down. And he says, I have a bad knee. I got to sit down. And he said, you know, I, love, I wanted to bring my wife here so badly because, you know, every time I come into town, I, I come here, and I, she really needed to be here today. And so I thought, well, that's, that's really lovely. And so anyway, as I went through the rest of the Stations of the Cross, you come to that moment where you see a statue of the risen Christ, his hands up, upheld like this. You see the wounds in his hands. It's a beautiful uh, statue of the risen Jesus. And she is sitting there right before him, before the statue. And I was amazed by it. She said, you know, I just lost my mom in February, and uh, I'm so grateful I'm here. I feel renewed. But did you notice if you look in Jesus' eyes of that statue, you just see, I don't know how the artist was able to convey this, but he was able to chisel, make those eyes look like there's such a tenderness, a gentleness, a love just outpouring from his eyes. And, and it just enveloped me, me in his love. And I'm so grateful to see that. So I went up to this, I went up to it, I said, sure enough, you really look into those eyes, it's just amazing. Love is pouring forth from those eyes. And it was a wonderful gift uh, that she gave me, that those nuns gave me, that Jesus gave me on that day. And so as we come here, we too, 
and behold him. In his invisible presence, some of these humble elements of bread and wine made into the body and blood of Christ by the Holy Spirit, through which we can say, Behold how much God loves you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. All things come of thee, O Lord, and of thy own have we given thee. is offered to the greater glory of God in thanksgiving for the Holy Eucharist, which means thanksgiving, and that Jesus Christ, the risen Lord, is made known to us in the breaking of bread from St. Luke's Gospel, uh, which was proclaimed by the two of the disciples of our Lord at that time. Um, I want to ask you to please pray for, in particular on this prayer list in the bulletin, uh, for the repose of the soul of Anne Whitfield, a longtime member of our parish, and one who gave much to our Lord Jesus uh, in service to others. So pray for uh, her soul, and also we pray for her husband, Jim, who grieves uh, her loss, as well as her, her sons, and us as well. So she's finished her course, and now she is dwelling with our Lord Jesus in paradise. Thanks be to God. I also ask your prayers uh, for Joyce Johnson, who is in poor health. Um, she is in the hospital at this time, but please pray for healing for her. Also, we pray for Jenny Hope, uh, Deacon Hope's wife. Jenny, we're praying for you, dear. And where are you? There you are. As you uh, keep up your battle against uh, cancer, we pray for full healing for you. Uh, we love you. 
Uh, please pray for also uh, those who are uh, we've been ministering to at Eisenberg Elementary School with the Good News Club, spreading the gospel and teaching the children the Bible. There are about 25 children we are ministering to on Friday afternoons. Pray for the volunteers as we continue to share the gospel with them. Also ask your prayers for all of our ministries and uh, please pray for all those who, who do not know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. May there be a renewal of the faith in our time and our nation. Let us pray for the whole state of Christ's church. Almighty and ever-living God, who by thy holy apostle has taught us to make prayers and supplications and to give thanks for all men, we humbly beseech thee most mercifully to accept our alms and oblations and to receive these our prayers, which we offer on to thy divine majesty, beseeching thee to inspire continually the universal church with the spirit of truth, unity, and concord, and grant that all those who do confess thy holy name may agree in the truth of thy holy word and live in unity and godly love. We beseech thee also so to direct and dispose the hearts of all Christian rulers that they may truly and impartially administer justice to the punishment of wickedness and vice and to the maintenance of thy true religion and virtue. Give grace, O Heavenly Father, to all bishops and other ministers, especially our Archbishop Schultz, Bishops Hansen and Ashman, Father David St. John, our assisting priest, Father our Deacon Marty Hope, and also myself and Abel Wilson, our postulants of holy orders. And we pray for other ministers that they may both by their life and doctrine set forth thy true and lively word and rightly and duly administer thy holy sacraments. And to all thy people, give thy heavenly grace, and especially to this congregation here present, that with meek hearts and due reverence they may hear and receive thy holy word, truly serving thee in holiness and righteousness all the days of their life. And we most humbly beseech thee of thy goodness, O Lord, to comfort and succor all those who, in this transitory life, are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any other adversity. And we also bless thy holy name for all thy servants departed this life in thy faith and fear, beseeching thee to grant them continual growth in thy love and service, and to give us grace so to follow their good examples that with them we may be partakers of thy heavenly kingdom. Grant this, O Father, for Jesus Christ's sake, our only mediator and advocate. <clears throat> Ye who do truly and earnestly repent you of your sins, and are in love and charity with your neighbors, and intend to lead a new life, following the commandments of God, walking from henceforth in his holy ways, draw near with faith, Take this holy sacrament to your comfort and make your humble confession to Almighty God devoutly kneeling. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, maker of all things, judge of all men, we acknowledge and bewail our manifold sins and wickedness, which we from time to time most grievously have committed, by thought, word, and deed against thy divine majesty, provoking most justly thy wrath and indignation against us. We do earnestly repent and are heartily sorry for these our misdoings. The remembrance of them is grievous unto us. The burden of them is intolerable. Have mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. For thy Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake, forgive us all that is past. And grant that we may ever hereafter serve and please thee in the newness of life, to the honor and glory of thy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of his great mercy hath promised forgiveness of sins to all those who with hearty repentance and true faith turn unto him, have mercy upon you, pardon, and deliver you from all your sins. 
confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and bring you to everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. tender mercy, didst give thine only Son, Jesus Christ, to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption, who made there by his one oblation of himself once offered a full, perfect, and sufficient sacrifice, oblation, and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world, and it institutes, and in his holy gospel, command us to continue a perpetual memory of that his precious death and sacrifice until his coming again. For in the night in which he was betrayed, he took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of this, for this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sins. Do this as oft as ye shall drink it in remembrance of me. Father, according to the institution of thy dearly beloved Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, we, thy humble servants, do celebrate and make here before thy divine majesty with these thy holy gifts, which we now offer unto thee, the memorial thy Son hath commanded us to make, having in remembrance his blessed passion and precious death, 
his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, rendering unto thee most hearty thanks for the innumerable benefits procured unto us by the same. And we most humbly beseech thee, O merciful Father, to hear us, and of thy almighty goodness vouchsafe to bless and sanctify for thy word and Holy Spirit these thy gifts and creatures of bread and wine, that we, receiving them, according to thy Son, our Savior Jesus Christ's holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood. And we earnestly desire thy fatherly goodness mercifully to accept this our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, most humbly beseeching thee to grant that by the merits and death of thy Son, Jesus Christ, and through faith in his blood, we and all thy whole church may obtain the remission of our sins and all other benefits of his passion. And here we offer and present unto thee, O Lord, ourselves, our souls, and bodies, to be a reasonable, holy, and living sacrifice unto thee, humbly beseeching thee, that we and all others who shall be partakers of this holy communion may worthily receive the most precious body and blood of thy Son, Jesus Christ. Be filled with thy grace and heavenly benediction, and leave one body with him, that he may dwell in us, and we in him. And although we are unworthy for our manifold sins to offer unto thee any sacrifice, yet we beseech thee to accept this our bounden duty and service, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offenses. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom, in the unity of the Holy Ghost, all honor and glory be unto thee, O Father Almighty, world without end. Amen. Let us pray. And now, as we are bold to say, and now, as our Savior Christ hath taught us, we are bold to say, <coughs>
come to this thy table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in thy manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under thy table, but thou art the same Lord whose property is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of thy dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body, and our souls washed through his most precious blood, and that we may evermore dwell in him, and he in us. Amen. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him that taketh away the sins of the world. Lord, Lord I am not worthy, and thou shalt come in my birth. But speak the word only, and my soul shall be healed. Lord, I am not worthy, but thou shalt come in my word. But speak the word only, and my soul shall be healed. Lord, I am not worthy, but thou shalt come to my word. But speak the word only, and my soul shall be healed.
almighty and ever-living God, we most heartily thank thee for the vows vouchsafed to feed us, who have duly received these holy mysteries with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of thy Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And just assure us thereby thy favor and goodness towards us, and that we are very members in corporate in the mystical body of thy Son, which is the blessed company of all faithful people, and are also heirs through hope of thy everlasting kingdom by the merits of his most precious death and passion. And we humbly beseech thee, O Heavenly Father, so to assist us with thy grace, that we may continue in that holy fellowship and do all such good works as thou hast prepared for us to walk in. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost be all honor and glory, world without end. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Depart in peace. Thanks be to God. And the peace of God which passeth all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen.